see your worship on time. We do have a guest here.
I want you to say. The third purpose is discipleship, and you have several opportunities this Lenten season to study God's Word together. And I hope you'll look at those in your upcoming events and announcements. And then we have two more, evangelism, sharing your faith, and the last one is service, mission, doing things for other people. And for this season of Lent, we have a little purple card where I am part of a kindness conspiracy. And believe me, every day I'm on a kindness conspiracy, but these are things you can just get ideas of how every day for 40 days of Lent you can be a blessing to somebody because God has blessed you. Amen? Amen. 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 Pastor John is looking for anyone that loves this church and would like to become a member. You're already part of the family of God if you have Jesus in your heart. Right. All right? And then... Put your roots down, because what good is a soul, one soldier without an army? What's one good one musician that's not in a band? Okay, together we're strong, and we're going to talk about that in our message today. And the other thing is we have these Lenten folders. Oh, man, I didn't bring one up. Okay, good. It's um, a cardboard folder, and because of Jesus' incredible sacrifice of giving up everything for you and me, We'd like to make a sacrifice of Lent as well. And if you would put a little offering in each one of those days. I know some people have less money than others, but if you give it with joy, I don't care if you put a penny in it or a quarter or a dollar. You can do whatever you, the Lord leads you to do. And I promise you, Hope and Atonement Church will put it to very good use here in ministry. And now we have an opportunity to respond to our wonderful God who loves us so much that he showers blessings on us every day. Is anybody blessed this week? Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Now we're going to bless God back with our offering. Let us pray. Great and glorious God, you indeed are almighty God, all-knowing, all-powerful, ever-present. You are God, our provider, our protector. You are our all in all, Lord God, and we love you. We love your son, Jesus, and we walk with your Holy Spirit to the best of our ability. Now, Lord, receive, as we receive this tithe, and offerings this morning, Lord God, we do pray that you would multiply it, that we can connect the Claymont community and beyond to Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. And let the church say, Amen. 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 Listen, church. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power in the name. Yeah. 
Today's Bible reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods, they gave to anyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes, and they, and they ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. And this is God's word for God's people. Amen. Amen. before Jesus is about to be crucified and he comes into Jerusalem uh, looking to take steps towards the cross. As he's doing this, people catch word that Jesus is coming, their Savior, and the response to this is overwhelming. The people of Jerusalem have decided they're going to get palm branches. Palm branches are a symbol of victory. As Jesus is riding in, his people, his followers, those who believe him to be the Messiah, are looking to raise up to him, to show him that they believe that he is there to redeem them, to take them uh, out of the hands of tyranny. The belief of Ash Wednesday comes from an idea of sacrifice an idea of change. So we take these symbols and we burn them. We take away what we thought was one thing and Jesus turns it into another.
So what we do is we take the branches from the Palm Sunday of the previous year and we take them and we burn them, take the ashes, and we combine them with something like uh, an anointing oil or, or holy water to create a paste. And with this paste, we mark the foreheads of those of us who are coming to remember Lent. We're coming to remember that Christ made the ultimate sacrifice. And so for us, 40 days of, of being able to let go of something that we enjoy, something that we look at as a luxury, um, it's just a small sacrifice, a small reminder of the sacrifices and the things that Jesus did for us. Palm branches and ashes, they're just symbols, but they're symbols that help us re remember. They remind us that Jesus' sacrifice was bigger, stronger, wider. And so for that, we choose to go throughout our day with an ash cross on our forehead. Yes, indeed, we are in the season of Lent. It's 40 days that started on Ash Wednesday, and it doesn't count Sundays, but it's 40 days that can change your life if you would just allow God to do that, if you are willing. When the puppet was up here singing that song, You Raised Me Up, I remember the very first time I ever heard that song, sung on television by Josh Groban. And it just reduced me to tears because I immediately thought of it in a spiritual sense. And there are two versions, the Christian version that you heard here this morning and then the secular version. But either one will touch your soul and your spirit if you will just find a quiet place to let it do that. So Lent is a time, a church season. It's not a biblical word, but it's a tradition. And my friends, we're all on a spiritual journey. You hear me say that often because it's true. And as part of our spiritual journey, we have chosen to worship here at this church as Christians, as followers of Jesus Christ, and it just so happens to be a Methodist church. But I'll tell you what, John Wesley was the bomb.com in his daytime because he came up with this super thing with a big word that it describes it, but he's just saying that through your spiritual journey, you have traditions that you do that help you grow in your spiritual journey and your, and your, spiritual, and your spirituality. He also said you have experiences that contribute to your spiritual growth. And then you have the word of God, reading the scriptures and studying and learning that contributes to your spiritual growth. And then you have this most amazing mind that helps you to reason and understand what you're experiencing, understand what you're living. And um, it's, it's awesome. It's just super awesome. We belong to a really cool church. And we belong to a really cool group of people that happen to be called Methodists, and I'm going to explain that to you in just a couple minutes here. But I want to first say that my spiritual growth is the most important thing to me. I won't go to a normal doctor. I really try to stay away from the doctors. Because everybody that's really old says they stay away from the regular doctors, okay? But if you need a doctor, I understand. But I'm just, I kind of call a couple nurses, and I have a midwife that does well care for me and stuff. I'm just kind of into, like, trusting God with my health. Amen. Because doctors have done tons of tests on me when I've had a problem and have come to no conclusion. And so in desperation, what do we do? Start talking to God about it, and then we find out, well, God fixes it, you know? Amen. Amen. God hears and answers the prayers of his people, my friends. He's very faithful in that way. Forever and ever. So anyway, I have even a greater dream than my own spiritual growth. And we heard about it in the Bible reading from Acts 2.42. This is my dream for the body of Christ, for the community of believers, that's us, and even beyond us. All our brothers and sisters around the world are part of this community and my dream is that all believers would devote themselves to the apostles' teachings, that you would get involved in some group that you are studying the Word of God. If all you ever do is study the Word of God, you become a really big, fat Bible baby. 
okay? You got to do more than study the Bible. You got to live it. You got to fellowship with Christians. You got to worship God. You got to put it into action with evangelism, witnessing what you believe, and in service to other people. I also have a dream for us to be devoted to fellowship, where not one person would leave after the branch unless they came down, had a cup of coffee, and talked to somebody new. There's always new faces here when I come. You don't have to go home. Guess what? Everything can wait. Believe me, I'm 61. Woo! -hoo! Getting me closer to heaven. Every year, my birthday is last year, last week, and I felt so much love for my church family. It was the best birthday I've ever had. It really was awesome because that's what God's love does. But I'm just saying we need to fellowship with each other. These guys did it, and we've been doing it for thousands of years. Hello, so let's keep up the tradition, everybody. And to share in meals, including the Lord's Supper, which we will do today. And finally, to prayer. The most important thing we could do. A deep sense of awe came over all these people gathered together, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs. You know, a miracle is something that you can explain. I have a miracle testimony right here and now that I just received this morning, minutes ago. We have a lovely new uh, group of, a couple of friends that worship here named, I wouldn't say Laverne and Shirley, but it's Laverne and Dorothy. Laverne and Dorothy, Dorothy, right here. Dorothy has just had an MRI done and the brain tumor that she has is gone. <laughs> Hallelujah! That's the God we believe in. So you know why she's dancing. You know why she's facing the Lord here at Atonement Church. Okay. When you can't understand something, it's a wonder. And I have been told by, by our wonderful Atonement and Hope spiritual director, Wayne Hendrickson, the missionary to the Ukraine, that the Holy Spirit is falling around the world in the most incredible ways, and there's going to be a tremendous awakening where we will see signs and wonders, miracles happening here in the Church of the Atonement, here in Claymont, and they're already beginning, my friends. It's not hokey pokey, okay? It's not a coincidence. It is God. It is God. It is God. And all the believers met in one place and shared everything that they had. They sold their property with those uh, and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together and they met in homes for the Lord's Supper and shared their meals with great joy yeah. and generosity. I made an announcement downstairs today that um, we had a request for some women's clothing. And I had a woman come up right at the end of the service and she go, I'm cleaning out my closet, I'll drop it off and leave it in the Welcome Center this week. We have a need we need to ask. Don't be afraid to ask. We're here to help each other and to make life better. Because life is difficult, isn't it? Has anybody here got an easy street and I don't know about it? No. Okay, no way. That's just a song from Annie. Okay, all the while praising God, enjoying the good will of all the people. My friends, my dream is coming true because I see this happening here in our churches. And I say, praise the Lord and keep it coming because we are willing, aren't we? And there's no greater time than this month of March during the season of Lent for us to be studying a new series about growing in grace. How does a person grow in grace and what is grace? Well, we have talked about grace many times here at the church, and since we're supposed to be doing a spiritual checkup during Lent and examining ourselves, we're going to be able to give you some suggestions about what the means of grace are so that you can experience God's grace more fully in your life. Grace is defined by the special book that the Methodists have called the Book of Discipline as this, the undeserved, unmerited, you don't deserve it, you didn't work for it, and loving action of God in human existence through the ever-present Holy Spirit. Woo-hoo! Yay, God! It's God's free gift to us so that we can live the full and abundant life that he promises us 
when, with Jesus' own words in John 10.10. 10. Grace is God doing what we could never do for ourselves. Yay, God? Yay, God, and amen. This morning, you can choose one of the means of grace that, to use during this Lenten season to grow in your spirituality for your own spiritual health. And you can open up your heart and your mind and you can allow God's Holy Spirit to come in and to put that desire inside of you to really do this. Maybe you already felt the temptations, I like to say, the promptings of the Holy Spirit already in these matters. John Wesley came up with this term, means of grace. And his life was characterized by personal discipline. He um, responded to God's grace in his life by coming up with these ways of doing things. And he was so methodical, so passionate, so intentional, out of habit, just habit, 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 of doing things the same way in his pursuit of holiness for his own life and for his heart. And that's why he and his followers were made fun of and insulted and called Methodists because they always did things the same way, the same method. It means, these means of grace are Christian practices or disciplines that I know you already are familiar with. And God's grace is working in us to make us holy as we practice and participate in these means of grace. Now, the kind we're going to talk about today are called works of piety. Now, works mean, can mean actions or deeds, but the word piety means devotion. So basically, they're works of devotion, where God plants a desire in our heart to do something to please him, and then we respond to that and obey that, which is in the word of God, supporting what you're hearing in your spirit, to respond to God's Holy Spirit to do something about it. And then once you act, God showers you with more of his grace. And it's a win-win situation. It's better for you to be living in God's will. And you also get to experience what you need to be able to live in God's will. The means of grace are those things through which God gives us more grace to become more like his son, Jesus Christ, here in the kingdom of God on earth. And the more you look like Jesus, the more you act like Jesus, the more attractive people will be to you. They want to know, why well, is Pastor Amy happy all the time? Well, I'm not happy all the time, actually. But I have deep down joy that I'm not going to let this world steal from me or the devil. Why is Pastor Amy so calm all the time? Well, I'm not calm all the time, but I have peace that passes human understanding, and calm is the daughter of peace. So hello, if I got the peace, I'm going to have the calm to go along with it. And people want to know about that, and they'll want to know about yours as well. These are more reasons to praise God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. And these acts of devotion begin with, and they're propelled by God's Holy Spirit living inside of us. We choose freely whether we want to do them or not. But when we do, our faith journey is enriched and strengthened and more hopeful and more joyful and more peaceful because we are so much more experiencing God's amazing grace and love for us. And not only for us, but for, for God and for other people. Grace is not my idea. I didn't invent it. I didn't think of it. And for the most part, I can never begin to truly understand all of it. Are you with me? And I can't make it flow. And I can't impact a life with it. I can talk about it, but you can go home and do nothing about it. It's your free will to choose. God has done it all. God, through his Holy Spirit, showers us with his grace as we respond to these ways of growing in grace, these disciplines. It's like this. On the internet, I found a really good analogy for it. Okay, up here's a picture. This guy went 
down and bought a new boat, okay? He didn't know, he, he wants to be a sailor, okay? Some people want to be actors and some people want to be rich, but this guy wanted to be a sailor. Okay, now, the sailor did not create the boat. He did not create the water in which it floats. He did not create the wind that propels its sail. And he certainly did not establish the laws of physics that allows the boat to sail. And no, nor can the sailor control the wind. True? True that, right? Now, what the sailor can do, however, is he can learn to read the wind and steer the rudder in such a way that the sail will catch the wind and it will, motor, it will power it to go in the direction that he wants it to go. The boat will never sail from one place to another without the efforts of the sailor. But it's not actually the sailor who moves the boat. It's only the wind that does that. True? True. True. This is just like the means of grace. They are practices in which we grow in God's grace towards Christ-likeness. All because of what God is doing through the Holy Spirit. The same God that created the water, the same God that created the wind, the same God that established the laws of physics, the same God that controls the wind. So how can a person grow in grace through these acts or works of devotion, which are the dis disciplines of Christian growth? And John Wesley, he wrote a sermon about this. And believe it or not, that man, when he wrote a sermon, it was like pages and pages and pages long. He had to have preached all afternoon. Pastor Jim and I write on that man. He really, wrote, have you, his, his sermons are so lengthy. And I'm hoping someday they translate them out of 1700 language so I can understand them better. But here's what I found out from his wonderful sermon that to him, the greatest of all the spiritual disciplines is prayer. How many of your prayers? You got prayers in the house? Okay. A short prayer, a long prayer, a written prayer, a spoken prayer, a cried prayer. I've done them all. I probably have 50 journals that I've kept in over 30 years where I have written out my prayers because I tell God I'm like schizophrenic. I can't keep my mind. I can't let everything interferes with my mind when I'm trying to pray. Does anybody have that problem? I take a pen and paper and write them out. Because I'm like, God, I'm gonna write this out because I love you so much. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna force my mind and my heart to talk to you, to communicate to you. Prayer is the number one of the spiritual disciplines because it's revealing my heart to God. And it gives God an opportunity to communicate back. So you know what I do in my journals? Sometimes I take a page and I write, God, I'm gonna write a letter to myself. And I begin, dear Amy, this is my letter from God. And then I just write everything without even thinking on a piece of paper that I believe God is saying to me. And when I go back and read those letters that I've written over the years, I'm telling you, it's extremely revealing and powerful because it is always what I needed to hear from the Lord at that very moment, but it's not until I get away from it and have a season like Lent, but I'm trying to remember all the goodness of God in my life, that I go back and read those letters. My friends, I'm giving you golden nuggets on how to grow through prayer, and there's so many more. Corporate prayer too, we came together, we pray together, and we agree. And it's the most powerful of all prayers because our hearts are united in the name of Jesus and God hears the prayers of righteous people and answer them. That's how healing occurs. That's how lives are changed. Number two is searching the scriptures, reading the Bible, studying meditation. If I had a nickel in it for every devotional, every study guide, every study I have ever done, I telling you, my friends, I've done literally hundreds of them because I am so thirsty for the word of God. I can't, I, I can't tell you, it heals you. It does everything you need, but you've got to be willing to pick it up. And if you don't understand it, then you need to get a Bible you do understand. 
Someone told me the other day they had five Bibles and they lay them all out and they were telling me they study. Oh my goodness. If I have one, I have 20. And every one of them has the answer I am looking for. And I will dig for it like a pearl of great price to find what I want to know. Because God put that desire in my heart to do that. It's God's Holy Spirit drawing me to the Word. And finally, fasting. The best story I have about fasting is this. A number of years ago, one of our daughters was really getting older in her age, in her thoughts, in her 20s. And she, she had it all in her mind, the kind of guy she wanted to marry. She had four or five things that I knew she really wanted to be in a man. And that wasn't happening. And so for one and a half years, my husband and I fasted every Wednesday, from Wednesday at midnight until Wednesday at 6 p.m., praying for our daughter and praying for a godly man to come into her life. And then, God, we just felt released from it. We didn't pray anymore. And it took, it has to be between one and two years before that man pursued her walked into her life, asked her out on Facebook, and she said no. And now they're together for almost two years, and he is exactly what she wanted in a man. And I'm telling you, my friends, fasting works. Bible reading works. Prayer works. And these are just some of the disciplines. Witnessing is one. Tithing is one. And the last one that I want to um, end with is that there are also things we can do as a community, as a faith community together, that are a means of grace. Yes. And this is one of them that John Wesley put tremendous emphasis on, and that is the receiving of the sacraments. Baptism is one sacrament in the Methodist tradition, and Holy Communion is the other one. It is a means of grace where the entire body of Christ, that's you and me, who desire to increase the grace of God in their lives, can partake of Holy Communion and experience that. It is by God's Holy Spirit that we receive grace through our obedient participation in the Sacrament of Holy Communion. Some people don't feel worthy to receive Holy Communion, my friends. You know what? None of us are worthy. None of us are worthy. It is through the receiving of the elements of Holy Communion, the bread and cup that John Wesley believed was the moment to experience the presence of Jesus Christ through God's grace. And during Holy Communion, a believer is provided access to the flow of God's grace, especially sanctifying grace. Sanctifying grace that strengthens us and deepens and improves our Christian walk our love for God and for Christ and for the Holy Spirit and the church and the sanctifying grace gives us what we need towards the goal of being more like Jesus Christ. It's true that um, we're not worthy. How many of you are reading your little one Bible promise book? Does everybody have one of these? If you don't have one, I still have a few left. There's a Bible promise and guess what? March all 30 days we're reading about grace. So if you don't have one, you need to have one. You talk to me after church, okay? Because God's grace is raining down on all of us here. Before we take Holy Communion this morning, we have to deal with some stuff. And one is we need to deal with the sins in our lives. And so I say to you, there's not one day that goes by that I do not sin. I am a sinner saved by grace, and as hard as I try, we all are sinners, okay? Now, you might think, well, Pastor Amy, I'm in a really good place. This is, this is what was on a plaque one time. I haven't sinned. Okay, it's a new day. I haven't sinned. I didn't gossip. I didn't talk bad about anybody. I didn't have to tell any little white lies. I wasn't mean-spirited. I didn't get really angry and sin in my anger. And then the alarm goes off. <laughs> and you haven't gotten out of bed yet. So you haven't sinned, obviously. That's just funny. But, you know, we all, there are two kinds of sins. There's the sin where we do something and we need to ask God for forgiveness. And the 
way the Methodists do it, the way the Bible says, is confess it as soon as you know you've done it because the Holy Spirit is convicting you. Oh boy, Amy, you shouldn't have said that. God, I'm really sorry. You know I struggle with my tongue. Please forgive me. And God is faithful to forgive. All I had to do was ask. And the same is true for you. That's what the Bible says. Now, there are sins of omission. And I think that we really need to think about this part. Because the Bible says that we're supposed to be visiting the prisoners. We're supposed to be clothing the naked. We're supposed to be feeding the hungry and giving a cup of water to those who are thirsty. We're supposed to be taking care of the widows. We're supposed to be taking care of the orphans. This week I had gone out and I was in a store and I was talking to a lady that had an accent and I asked her where she was from. She's from Hungary. She told me a lot about Hungary because I was doing my random acts of kindness and listening to her story. She told me there are so many abandoned children in Hungary. It would break your heart. We're supposed to be taking care of those orphans, my friends. We're supposed to be visiting people in prisons. Bill Grant, who worships over at Hope, some of you probably know him, he has wanted to start a prison ministry for two years, and every door has shut on him. And we just think it's starting to squeak open a little bit because we have found a connection that might be able to help us to start a prison, prison ministry. And whatever we're doing at Hope Atonement, you are always welcome to join us. We love it when we do things together. So we are guilty of sins of omission where we have not done what we should be doing. So right now we're going to have a moment of silence before we begin to um, bless the elements here and have Holy Communion. So please confess your sins to God and receive his forgiveness full and free in Jesus' name. Almighty God, we thank you for the blood of Jesus that covers all our sins, past, present, and even the future ones we haven't committed yet or not done yet. God, you are such a wonderful God. You will deserve all the honor and praise and glory, for you are such a holy God. Everything about you is good and sacred and honorable, Lord God. You're a God of beauty. You're so creative. You're so loving and generous, God. And our hearts are turned towards you, Lord God, because of Jesus. We thank you for the gift, the most precious gift of all is Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Lord God, that Jesus sits at your right hand in heaven's paradise where we will join you one day. And in the meantime, thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit who is moving and working in and through and around us and above us and below us on the spiritual journey that we are on. Lord God, may this Lent, these 40 days, Lord God, that have been so instrumental in the Old Testament and the New Testament for life changes, may you change us, O oh God, for I know that you love us, but you don't want us to stay this way. You want us to look more like Jesus Christ. For I pray all this in his name. Amen. 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 So Pastor Amy needs to have a couple of volunteers for Holy Communion. Adrian, you will come up and help me, please. I also need two more. Uh, Dorothy, would you like to come up since you've been healed in the name of Jesus? Are you comfortable with serving Holy Communion? Would you like to? And Elaine, would you like to? Come on. And here's how it, here's how we do it. Adrian, I'm gonna work with you. And Elaine, I wanna just, can I call you out? Yep. Elaine? has been coming to Hope for less than two months. Pastor John was there at the beginning of February and he helped Elaine receive Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Lives are being changed in the name of Jesus Christ. And yesterday for Holy Spirit Saturday, she's filled and baptized in the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. And you're healed? Boy, we got some real testimonies for Jesus here this morning. So. On the night before Jesus was betrayed, and before he, and on the night he was betrayed, and on the night before he died, he set this wonderful table 
as a memory, a meal to, for us to remember his life, his death, his resurrection to come. And he gathered together with his closest friends, his faith community that he shared while he walked on this earth. And he took the bread and he gave thanks to God and called him Father, our Father in heaven. And he broke the bread and he told his disciples to take and eat and do this and remember me for this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup and sacrificed his life and he gave thanks to God. He looked at the cup and he said, this is my blood poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink. This is the sign of the new covenant. And do this and remember me. Holy God, pour out your spirit, your precious Holy Spirit, on these gifts and on all these people gathered here today, that we may be the body and blood of Jesus Christ in our world until we commune with you at the feast table in heaven. For we ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I pray that you'll make this the most holy, holy communion. We're going to receive grace. Be willing and know that whether you feel it or not, you are, that God is sharing and pouring out his grace upon you as you receive the bread and the cup. will come first so that they uh, do songs for us today for
this holy meal, this holy time, this holy place, Lord God, and we just thank you, God, that we know you, that we are your children, we are friends with you because of faith in Jesus Christ and by the power and presence of your spirit. We are overwhelmed with your spirit here today, Lord God, to your glory and praise and honor. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, church. One more time. If you're able, would you stand with us? Let's, let's ask God to open up the heavens. Amen? Yeah. Amen.